AdCAD allows you to insert many parametric objects directly on the roof slabs, for example a group of dormers. We select a dormer and note in the dialog box the parameters that allow you to resize all the details. Very important, as we will see, the first parameter in the list, cut in the slab. Firstly, we add one without the enabled option. We assign the appropriate values to the parameters and leave with OK. You are prompted to select the slab. By selecting the slab, the program obtains information about the slope of the plan in order to correctly generate the dormer. In this case, a slab has been simply drilled in the position of the dormer. Let's now insert the same dormer a second time. Having chosen the Insert option, we need to use Modify Parameters to return to the Parameter dialog box. This time, we activate the Cut in the Slab parameter. We select the slab and choose a fixed insertion point so as to align the wall of the dormer to the wall of the floor below. This time we see that the slab has been cut in order to align the wall of the dormer object to the wall of the floor below. The 3D view with the shaded image makes us understand without doubt the difference between the two cases. AdCAD provides a number of windows from which to choose the one we want for the dormer. The parameter values can be acquired from drawing, so with the end point snap we specify the width and then the window height. Finally we insert it in the left internal point. There are also other items that automatically adjust the slope of the roof. See, for example, the group of chimneys. Other examples are the photovoltaic panels. Let's choose the one that fits automatically to the slope of the roofs. We can see that the parameters allow to resize it freely. Like all objects, even those to be included on the roof can be changed at any time. In this case, we want to double the solar panel elements in the horizontal direction. Finally, we note that the HROOF command that applies hatches to the roof properly takes into account the presence of the inserted elements and correctly considers the islands. We now want to show how to build roof rafters. The GERDA command asks you to directly select the slab under which to create the joists. A suitable option displays all the parameters necessary to make the rafter frame according to our needs. The image on the right illustrates the significance of the values required. We set recess protrusion to zero because we want the rafters to end up exactly on the eaves line. We select the slab and here are the joists. Note that when generating the 3D of the attic walls, the presence of the joists is properly taken into account. We now want to create a more complex situation in which wooden planks are also present beneath the rafters. AdCAD treats the planks as if they were joists. Let's then insert the data according to our needs. In particular, the height of the planks, the rotation and the number calculated according to the area to be filled. Before selecting the slab in the side on which the planks will be orientated, we specify precisely the angular perpendicular to the planks themselves. In fact, we can see from the drawing that the direction of the planks is perpendicular to the specified angle, even though they are orientated on the side of the selected slab. We are now going to place the rafters using the same command, but changing the size appropriately. In particular, the distance from the joists to the slabs, which must be equal to the thickness of the planks.
This time we only need to select the eave side of the slab, as this side also represents the angle perpendicular to the joists to insert. We finally update the 3D representation of the walls, and to understand better what we have done, we create a section of the whole thing. Let's zoom in detail. The Gen View command has generated the section showing the result we wanted to achieve.